Hello from Oglethorpe Speedway Park on what is the final Friday night of racing in the track's history. I'm Jake Wallace. Thanks for joining us as we celebrate more than 70 years of this track here in Hulu. In this show, we'll learn more of the history of this track, its drivers, fans, and the people that have made it a Southeast Georgia tradition for seven decades. We start our show with a look at the family that has run this place since the 1970s. Andrew Gordon has more with the Stone family. The Stone family purchased Oglethorpe Speedway in 1977. From then on, drivers had plenty of reasons to compete in Pooler. Mr. Stone was the first dirt track promoter to offer drivers a purse of over $45,000. They were also the first dirt track to be part of NASCAR's weekly racing series. Most seasons, OSP averages over 100,000 fans, some of which will miss one of the track's more unique features, the Finish Line Pub, one of the only pubs built inside a track in the entire country. Carson is a third generation stone and has been spending time at the track for the last 24 years. Looking back on a lifetime at the track, it's the people that the Stone family will miss the most. We're going to miss the, you know, the community and the friends and family that we've made through here and, you know, seeing the familiar faces every Friday night and, you know, I'm sure we'll still see them around because you know, Savannah, it's big, but, it, you know, it's still small. Over the years here at Oglethorpe Speedway, there have been thousands of drivers cheered on by the fans, but two of the most beloved faces here at the track have never been behind the wheel. If you've ever been to the Oglethorpe Speedway, there's a good chance you've seen Darlene Neerich. They hired me and I started April 1st of 2000 to do bookkeeping. Of course, over the past two decades, her role has evolved. Co-manager, or as, as I like to tell everybody, I do everything but drive the water truck. <laughs> That has been my title for 20 years. But there is another employee who's been there just as long as Darlene, her daughter, Desiree. Pretty much born on this dirt. <laughs> well, I actually got married out there in the parking lot. And similar to her mother, Desiree does a little bit of everything here. Score! And everything else, sir. Of course, you may be wondering what keeps these do-it-all employees coming back. Well, a little bit of everything. The love of stock car racing and the love of the Stone family and the racers, our yeah. fans. It's like family. Literally it is. Dirt track racing is nothing but a big giant family. Mm. It's our dirt track family. A family they've collected 20 plus years of memories with. You actually started working here before I did. I learned everything out here. Pay her a dollar or two dollars a night. I would work for just the popcorn. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. She like, did. I can change my own tire and fix my own car. Learn how to drive a tractor. You learn yep. how to drive stick shift. Yep. Got stung by a wasp out here ended up solving a race and got the ambulance to come yes, over. Yes, we did. <laughs> Forgot about that too till just now. Some memories they had locked away. Others, they plan to keep that way. We won't tell those stories. <laughs> and there's even a few they still hope to make. I'm kind of sad because I never had the chance to race out here. It was always one of my dreams, but she was always too busy putting me to work and never in a race car. No, you're not, you got your even, chance to race a few times. Don't even I politic haven't. there. Don't even politic just saying, there. just saying, I've always nope. wanted my turn. No, nope, don't politic there. So yeah, you can probably understand why walking away after all these years it's, won't be easy. It's, it's, a, it's a mix. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be like losing a family member in a different way. But luckily for this family, it seems dirt is thicker than blood. And the best part about it is even though when the track goes, we know that this close-knit family, it's not going to be something that's sort of broken. It's always still going to be there no matter what. So even though the dirt's not still here, we'll all still be here. That's right. A lot happens on a racetrack. And over the past few years, there's been one man helping the fans keep pace with it all. Andrew Gordon introduces you to the voice of Oglethorpe Speedway. For over the last 60 years, hundreds of thousands of fans have walked through these gates with their tickets to watch the racing here at Oglethorpe Speedway Park. Now for about the last decade, the voice they hear over the PA system is Randall Jenkins. We sat down with him and talked about his time here. It's a lot of history and a lot of stuff went on since 1951. What originally started out as a horse track quickly transitioned into hosting a different kind of horsepower. Johnny Parsons won that first race, I believe, and he was actually an Indy 500 winner. Lee Petty came out one weekend to race, and actually Richard Petty signed in as a crew member because he was actually working for Lee at that time. Dale Earnhardt Sr., he's, he's on our list where he's been out here and raced before. Fireball Roberts, the Bakers, there's just been lots of those guys that are older now. 
101 trying to sneak up there and take the second spot away from the number eight. Randall Jenkins didn't see all of those legends race in person, but he has called the races for hundreds of drivers looking to make their way up the ranks over the years. I got some folks every now and then come in and sit and, and they're like, I don't want to disturb you. And I'm like, you're not going to disturb me because I'm watching the race and talking about the race. I, I'm locked in on that. Three wide in turn two, look like second, third, and fourth, trying to figure out who's going to get down the back straight away first. It's, it's not just sit here and say car number three won the race. You, you, if I got information on drivers, I'll talk about where they're from. Those drivers come from all over the country to compete, from a couple miles down the road to crossing state lines. Some teams will travel hours just to be strapped into their cars for a matter of minutes. A passion that runs in the families that tear up this Georgia clay. A lot of the guys that are racing now have sons or grandsons that are running. Just knowing that they got family members that are racing or come sit in the stands and watch somebody else. It's just like a big, I don't say racing family, but everybody sticks together. But racing, if somebody tears up, there's going to be five or six people running their trailer and see if they got what you need to get you back out. Even though you're a competitor, they want you back out having fun. So if they got it, they'll give it to you. Yeah, you you pay them back next week, sometimes they'll tell you don't worry about it. For many drivers and their families, it's not all about collecting trophies, it's about the camaraderie. Something Randall Jenkins has been able to be a part of and hopes he'll continue to be a part of after the final checkered flag flies at Oglethorpe Speedway. Um, I'm just glad that over years I've been able to meet people and sit around and shoot the breeze with them, have a good time, see some of these older guys get out of racing and come back. We've had some that got out for 10 or 12 years while our kids went through high school or went through school and they came back once the kids graduated. It's good to see that. And now they're bringing their kids back, get them into racing. It's kind of like watching the neighborhood just keep, it just keeps revolving and keeps going. It's not like falling apart. It's just somebody else takes that spot when somebody goes out. Thousands of drivers at one time or another have called Oglethorpe Speedway home a home they'll now say goodbye to one final time. Sam Bauman caught up with one former driver who explains why this old patch of dirt is much more than a racetrack. For former dirt track racer Hubert Keller, a trip to Oglethorpe Speedway is a trip down memory lane. This is Clem Burnson here. This is old Larry Jordy. I built that car. Some of those memories, a bit painful. I got my back broke out here in three places, and then I got in another wreck out here. Broke three ribs. Yeah, I've, I've been banged up pretty good. And occasionally he did a little bit of the banging up. And I got my helmet and I started beating him with the helmet. I'd have killed him if they'd have left me alone, but somebody grabbed my helmet and stopped me. This is the guy who beat me with the helmet. <laughs> this guy had two pockets. But through it all, good and bad, Hubert made a name for himself on this track. We raced out here for years and years and years, yeah. Yeah, I got my name down there on the front. I, on, they got a wall of fame or, or shame, one, one or the other. Of course, racing has come a long way since Hubert's day. And we started off, we just had regular old street cars. But this track is still where you'll find him. I like to see the guys out here, you know, and think about what they're doing and how much they're working, you know. And I enjoy, you know, just seeing the cars run. And Hubert, well, he still knows how to make an entrance. So as he prepares to say goodbye to his dirt track home, he counts himself lucky that the checkered flag will never wave on memory lane. You know, I'm gonna miss not coming out here and seeing the people and all that. That's what I'm gonna miss the most, is the people in the racetrack. That's gotta be with me for the rest of my life, which I don't know how long I've got, but uh, you know, I'm getting kinda old, but uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's been fun. I've enjoyed it. Sam Bauman, WTOC News. As we close out 70 years of racing here at Oglethorpe Speedway, our WTOC team was lucky enough to take the Storm Chaser out on the track. So as we say goodbye, let's enjoy one final lap at Oglethorpe Speedway. I pray Lord that each and every fan to see a great show here tonight. I have more people that I consider my racing family because of this place that I, could, I couldn't count. I couldn't tell you. This place is going to go and I'm going to miss it. So many families have been out here and raised their kids right here with this racing. 
right, 61, speed it up. Come on, 61, I need you to catch up to the field. I have two sons, both of them run their first go-kart race here, run their first car race here, won their first races here. Uh, it's just a special place to me. Everybody knows this is it. You got to go now. You got to go. You got to go. Green, 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 green. childhood around here and uh, we're just sad to see it go. Ladies and gentlemen, the checkered flag has fallen for the last time at Overthor Speedway Park. Thank you everyone for everything. Thank you to all of our drivers who celebrated our final race with us. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, it's been a staple in everybody's lives here. It's kind of like a historic landmark and we just hate it. We feel like that's about how we feel is one of George, uh, Savannah's uh, landmarks is kind of going away. So to, it, it's a shame, but we just try to have as many memories as we can while we're here. It's just such a, a heartbreaking thing to me, but all good things have to come to an end.